Hello, wonderful word weavers. Hello, my super sentence stackers. Welcome to the classroom. And I'm so glad you found me here. My name is Mrs. Considine and I am going to help you improve your writing. We are going to gather and collect words and put them in our vocabulary vault because together we are the Super Sentence Stackers. Right, now you've found yourself in the classroom, let's have a little think what Mrs C wants you to do. Well, I want you to be here with a switched on, exciting, buzzing mind. And if you've got a piece of paper, a pen or a pencil, then that is practically perfect. What I need you to do is to think, jot and gather words and note them down while you're in the classroom. All words matter and they are like little treasures that can help our writing zing later on down the line. The best, best-selling novelists in the whole world keep jotters and notepads with them all the time because words are so precious. They help us illuminate our thinking and ideas. And I have noticed a pattern, actually. Those children and adults who worry about words, gather, sort them and make note of them, these are the best writers. OK, uh, I want to celebrate somebody who has been in the classroom every single day since the beginning. And this celebration is for Habsa Khan, eight years old, oh, nine years old, oh no, plot point eight, and they are nine years old. I always get scrambled with numbers, but I just want to read this uh, from yesterday when we were writing about Pip the guide dog. I'm just going to tune your thinking in to some really wonderful language. It's very vivid and very precise. Pip heard a crescendo of tooting trucks and rocks rumbling and cranes clattering. Aghast and extremely horrified, she noticed a blind woman walking towards the dangerous building site. Sensing danger, Pip flew towards her like a zooming rocket flying through the air. And with determination, she squeezed through the miniature gap in the gate. The lady stood still, not knowing which way to go, so terrified and so scared. Just so well crafted, drenched in feelings and precise verbs. Thank you. And let me say this, the improvements, the progress. People who are writing every day, your writing has moved inordinately and is really impressive. So I'm going to see who impresses me today because you might find yourself on the celebration wall tomorrow. If it is your first time here, I know if it's not, you know what to do. But for all of our newbies, this is how super sentence stacking works. We build our writing around our film. And today's film is called Brush, a fox tail. And, well, it's a gorgeous, heartwarming story and a sprinkle of magic make people come together. We're going to explore this film in detail and there's always a link below that you can click and find the film. The other thing I'm going to ask you to do is never write for the whole film. I just want you to choose a chunk and also in the link below is a choose a chunk sheet. Now, I know there has been some bets about which chunk I might choose. I'm going to choose actually plot point five, chunk five. This is when something strange and magical happens in the den. That's the chunk I'm going to do. Now, 
how super sentence stackers works is, I want you to watch that film, but not yet. First, I want you to listen and jot in togetherness. We're going to be in harmony collecting words. Because words that I don't use, you might be able to use. You can also borrow some of my words too. So, what I need you to do now is get a pen, a pencil and a piece of paper. And there are certain things you need to write on your piece of paper. You need to write your name. I'm going to write my name. I never forget that. I'm going to write my age and chunk five. Now, the rules for super sentence stacking are this. You always write nine sentences and I challenge you to include three writing lenses. So I've got my piece of paper, I've got my pen and I have noticed some writers out there who do this sort their work into thinking side and writing side. I love that. Um, I love seeing your thinking, your jottings, your thesaurus thinking, little ideas that have popped into your mind. Um, that is really important. Okay, so what are our challenges today? They always come from the writing rainbow. And here are today's challenges. Number one, the first challenge I'm going to ask you to do is to write a complex sentence. I'm going to ask you to start that complex sentence with the word while. And I'm going to help you do that. I'm going to model one for you so you know exactly what I mean. The second challenge is we are going to use some figurative language that is themed and we're going to build a metaphor but we're going to think about what themed language could we use uh, and again I'm going to help you. I don't want you to panic about anything because soon you're going to see me write and provide you with a clear window to my thinking which will give you a lot of ideas and support. And the third thing we're going to have a go at doing is alliteration. And that's when we're going to have words that start with the same sound. And I know you are brilliant at that. OK, so what's going to happen now is you're going to see Mrs C's thinking. You are going to look inside the writer's brain and I'm going to talk out loud process, the words that I'm choosing. You're going to see me jostle and bustle with words. I'm going to put some in the bin that aren't good enough and I'm going to make my thinking really transparent and visible. Okay, are you ready word collectors? Are you ready word jotters? We are in perfect harmony gathering words together now. Okay, some things we need to agree. We're writing a third person narrative and we have two characters in this story so we need to give them names. Um, well, we've got Mr Fox and Miss Fox. So, um, Mr Fox, um, his first name is Fred and Miss Fox's first name is Freya. Um, we're going to be using the pronouns he and she. Those are the important character names of today. Right. My first challenge is to write a complex sentence using and starting with the word while. I'm going to remember that. But before I get to that, I'm going to make some jottings about this part of the story. Um, at chunk five, the sun sets and the moon appears. I'm going to write moon. And my chunk begins with a night sky. And 
um, we can see the two fox dens. They're my ideas. I want to set the scene now of the night sky and that it's night time. So I'm going to start just like that. The sky. I could write dark. The sky was dark. But I've just had an idea. This film is called Brush and Fred the Fox is a painter. He loves painting. In fact, he uses his fairy tail as a paintbrush. So I've had a little idea here. I can begin to introduce painting themed language. So I could perhaps now call the sky a canvas. Mm, that's a really good idea, Mrs. C. I do have to give myself encouragement to keep myself going. <laughs> the sky canvas was dark blue, inky blue, inky blue. The sky canvas was inky blue and the moon shone. I wonder if I could tangle up a painting idea with the moon. Um, a bit like, um, you know, all the paints, like a palette of paints. Oh, that's a good idea. The sky canvas was inky blue and the palette, almost like all the shades, that's a really paintery word. The palette of white. Hmm. There's a bit of magic in this story. I'm going to put wizard white. <laughs> wizard white moon. And then I need to say it was shining down on the two dens in the past tense. Shone down on the two dens. Oh, that is a good start. Oh, but I haven't done what I've been, been tasked to do. I need to have a go at this complex sentence beginning with while. I'm going to start with the while and that's going to make a clause, a subordinating clause. While Fred lay sleeping, I'm going to put a comma there because that clause doesn't stand on its own. And then I want to say Something odd happened. Something, mm, I'm not sure about odd. I'm going to go to my thesaurus thinking board, actually. Something odd um, in that synonym family. Uh, something remarkable. Mm. Something unusual. Oh, I like unusual. Something curious something strange. Oh, I like all of that. I think I'm going to say, hmm, I can't choose between unusual or strange. I think I'm going to go strange. Something strange happened. Oh, well done, Mrs. C. Tick. You've done the complex sentence beginning with while. <laughs> okay. I've just realised I've started something which is linked to this sort of metaphorical, figurative language. I've started to use painting words and I want to carry on with that. So I'm going to write down some more uh, paintbrush, um, mixing paints. Um, let me have another little think. Um, the, the, the stroke of the brush, different strokes. Mm. And actually, I'm just going to make a note here that the paintings come to life. Ooh. So I've got to try and push those two ideas together. All right. I want to create some magic. Oh, one of my favourite words. Oh, it rhymes with glimmer, shimmer. Oh, it just feels so magical to me that I'm going to use a shimmer, a shimmer. A glimmer, no, just a shimmer, I think. A shimmer of moonlight. Yes. 
And then I want to put that moonlight with something else. Oh, paint brush. A shimmer of moonlight brushed with, and I need to just inject some magic here. A shimmer of moonlight brushed with a sprinkle. Yes, a sprinkle of something dust. Mm, I need something really magical now. Let's go to the, the thesaurus thinking board. Um, so I've got dust. Um, I could have magic dust. I could have jewel dust. Um, I could have pixie dust. I could have elf dust. Mm. Almost the little come to life creatures are like little elves. I'm going to have elf, I think. Mm, elf. A shimmer of moonlight brushed with a sprinkle of elf dust and another painting word and mixed. Because you mix your paints, don't you? And mixed with a swirl of. Mm, I need some more magical words. A swirl of spellbinding. Oh, that's good. Star flash. <laughs> and, oh, look, I've got stroke I can use. And in one stroke, the paintings came to life. That is such a long sentence. I definitely need to read that back. A shimmer of moonlight brushed with with. That is a very common writing mistake to make. I've put in a word twice, so I need to edit that out. A shimmer of moonlight brushed with a sprinkle of elf dust and mixed with swirl. Mm, it's only a small word, but I've missed a word out. M mixed with a swirl of spell-binding star flash. And in one stroke, the paintings came to life. That is three bits of magic and three painting-themed words. Oh, Mrs C, you're on, on magical star flash fire today. Oh dear. Right. There's something else I want to do now. I really want these little elf-like creatures from the painting to pop out. Um, so, well, what are they? Uh, let's write that down first of all. They're a sunset. They're a tree and they come to life. They've got little eyes and they're a cloud. In fact, let's write down the order that they pop out. The sunset first, then the cloud, then the tree, actually. OK, so now let's see if I can build that. That popping, I'm going to do it as a count, I think. One, two, three. Pop, pop, pop. Maybe I don't need the pop, but I, I do like one, two, three. One, two, three. <laughs> then I could list them in the right order. Sunset, cloud, tree. I didn't know that was going to rhyme, but it does. One, two, three, sunset, cloud, tree. These fantastical, these weird, oh, weird doesn't seem very nice to say that, but... Um, let me just check what word I want to use. Weird. Weird. Strange. We used that earlier. We didn't use of though. I can maybe use that. Um, astounding. That's nicer and more positive. Marvellous. Marvellous. One L or two. Well, I'm going to be brave. I think it's one. And I can check that in a minute. Wondrous. You must always be a brave speller. Don't let your spelling doubters put you off using it. You must use it. 
You can always check. I'm going to go for wondrous. These wondrous friends of Fred. Friends of Fred. Now, if I am trying to do alliteration, I've got friends of Fred. I've introduced the f -f 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 sound, which means maybe wondrous isn't the right choice. Fantastical would be the better one to get that alliterative stickability, that lovely sound in the reader's mind. Um, these fantastical Oh, that is good now. These fantastical friends of Fred floated to the frame of Freya the Fox. I'm going to go back and reread that. These fantastic, oh, Mr. T in there. Good job I checked that. These fantastical friends of Fred floated to the frame of Freya the Fox. I'm going to go all the way back to the beginning and reread. I'm going to notice actually my little tangle of themed painting words. I'd love to see some painting words. Stroke, palette, mix in your writing. Here we go. The sky canvas was inky blue and the palette of wizard white moon shone down on the two dens. While Fred lay sleeping, something strange happened. A shimmer of moonlight brushed with a sprinkle of elf dust and mixed with a swirl of spellbinding star flash. And in one stroke, the paintings came to life. One, two, three. Sunset, cloud, tree. These fantastical friends of Fred floated to the frame of Freya the fox. I am zinging with excitement to read your work today. There's going to be elf dust and pixie sprinkles and shimmers and glimmers. There's going to be referencing to painting, a brush, a stroke, a palette, a canvas. You have got until 12.30 to get your writing back to me. Hashtag it with the super sentence stackers and I promise you I read all of your work. I try my best to comment on as many as I can but we're getting so busy here I cannot tell you. But I am on the lookout, truly on the lookout for that piece of work that pops with sharpness, magic, and maybe a sprinkling of romance. Oh, thank you, Super Sentence Stackers. I cannot wait to read your writing, and I'll see you tomorrow, face to face, to be your teacher, back in the classroom at quarter to 10. Thank you, everybody. Goodbye.